everyone. It's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So to the Trump supporter that laughed when I made the point that Trump was a war criminal, if you don't have the Constitution, constitutional authority, any legal justification whatsoever, to invade another country and murder large amounts of civilians, what do you call it? What do you call it? What are you? You are, by definition, a war criminal, just like the two that preceded him. This is The Guardian. It, it, essentially, what's been going on? Obama had, wasn't a slouch in regards to murdering civilians at all. Trump is besting him in spades, in absolute spades. This is The Guardian. By the time rescuers finally arrived, no one was left alive. For almost a week, desperate neighbors had scraped through the rubble searching for as many as 130 people who lay buried after three homes in West Mosul suburb were destroyed by coalition airstrikes. The full picture of the carnage continued to emerge on Friday, when at least 20 bodies were recovered. Dozens are thought to remain buried in what could turn out to be the single most deadly incident for civilians in the war against the Islamic State. Neighbors at the scene said that at least 80 bodies had been recovered from one house alone, where people had been encouraged by local elders to take shelter. Rescuers were continuing to dig through the ruins and the remains of two other houses nearby, which also had been pulverized in the attacks that were described as relentless and horrifying. Locals said militants had positioned a sniper on the roof of the home that had sheltered the largest number of people. It has raised questions about the rules of engagement in war against terror groups after two recent U.S. airstrikes in Syria resulted in casualties, or at least 90 casualties, nearly all of them thought to be civilians. So understand what's taking place. Trump is ramping up in Syria. He's been increasing the number of airstrikes in Yemen, essentially fighting for Saudi Arabia. In addition to dropping all of these airstrikes and all of this, um, all these, these targets, one of the things he's been doing is kind of postulating, hey, we need to adjust our civilian casualty count, or not the, the count itself, but Obama put in place this thing that says a near certainty that, this, that there wouldn't be civilian deaths. It was bogus. It was absolutely bogus. Obama murdered thousands of civilians. By the same token, Trump is like, yeah, this is in my way. This is in my way. He's essentially asking, or wants, a review in order to increase the number of civilians that he can murder in any particular campaign. That's an amazing thing. That's absolutely amazing. Speaking from the clinic where he was being treated, the man's son, Ali Handler, said, there was a lot of bombing above us. Then I started to feel everything collapse around us. We were buried for 10 hours until the neighbors dug us out. Another man, Subhan Ishmael Ibrahim, said his wife and three children had been killed in the same house. One child was four, the other one years old, and the third less than three months. Speaking with Stony Calm, he added, I have lost them all, and the world must know what happened to them. Somebody else asked the question. Well, somebody else asked the question. It was like, so wait a minute. Just because a sniper was on the house, it warranted murdering all those people? That's a fair question. Donald Trump, earlier this year, ordered a review of the rules engagement set by his predecessor, which had insisted on near certainty that there would be no civilian casualties before airstrikes could be sanctioned. While it had not yet been completed, there are mounting concerns that the very fact a review has been ordered may have already led to the threshold being lowered. Again, I make the point that Obama's thing, even though it says near certainty, that's politics. I mean, he essentially said if you're 16 years old and you're in a particular area, you're a fair game to be killed. He killed thousands of civilians. Trump is essentially saying, oh man, this lax rule that I'm dealing with for my predecessor in order to limit the number of civilians that we murder, this is in my way. This is in my way. This is causing me problems. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Look, certainly you know that's a problem. Certainly you know that's a problem. One member or one country or one politician in a particular country in a world of nations, has asserted the authority to unilaterally murder people, civilians, in other countries. 
He doesn't have constitutional authority to do it. He doesn't have any kind of moral justification to do it. He just did it. He did it because the previous president did it. And he did it because the previous president before him did it. At no point did Congress assert their, their due diligence to rein in the behavior of the president. Both administrations, Democrats and Republicans, have been doing the same thing with regards to military policy. He's murdering civilians. I keep making this point. This blows me away because it seems like it's a big fucking deal. This is not a video game. He is literally dropping bombs. We are supposed to believe that death by an American bomb is somehow better than murder by a terrorist. It's not. It's not. Not in the least. We shouldn't be over there. We shouldn't be over there. We've caused enough harm. And if we're going to make this case that Trump is somehow justified in doing this, Bush killed upwards of a million people. Obama lowered it. He's moderate. So he killed them in moderation. Maybe a few thousand. Donald Trump is going to blow past, at the very least, Obama. Do you honestly believe, even if you're a Trump supporter, that how many of these people do you have to kill before you get some kind of progress that you're looking for? You're murdering civilians. You're murdering people's moms, kids, brothers, sisters, daughters. You don't believe that the people who are in that particular area are going to be angry at having their people murdered, particularly if they're innocent, particularly if they're not, if they have nothing to do with any of this stuff that's going on. They're just innocent person trying to live their life. And you murder their wife and kid. What do you think they're going to do? I would make this argument that many of the people who are supporting ISIS have nothing to do with religion. I would wager that a lot of it is just anger. They t looked at the fastest thing moving, ISIS, and they lended support with this idea of striking back. You will never reach a situation where you're going to kill your way to a victory. You're not. Every person you killed, every civilian that you murdered, you are raising additional soldiers, additional people who are trying to take your head off. Not because they're wrong, which is what you need to understand. This is not some kind of religious terrorism thing. Some of these people are justified in being angry at the things that we're doing. We are murdering civilians. Wholesale, we're in eight Muslim countries, bombing, murdering civilians, women, children. In fact, there was a report today that came out that was showing all of these kids that have been murdered. Monitoring groups said most of the dead were civilians who had gathered at a mosque to pray while the Pentagon claims that the gathering was a meeting about Qaeda members. The next day, 42 Somali refugees were gunned down by a helicopter gunship near the Yemen coast. Somalia accused Saudi Arabia of carrying out the strike. Eyewitness accounts suggest a U.S.-made Apache helicopter was used to carry out the deadly strike. We are murdering people in all of these countries. You honestly believe that you take somebody's loved one, that they're just going to let that skate. They're going to let that slide. That's insane. This is a failed policy. And we will get hit again from policies like this. We should not be over there. We should not be stirring up this hornet's nest. For the most part, we are in other people's country. Congress is not giving Trump any level of authority whatsoever. Congress did not give Obama any level of authority whatsoever to do any of this stuff. This is gross. It's absolutely gross. And before any kind of Democrat, you know, says, yeah, this is gross, your guy was doing the same thing. Hillary Clinton would have done the same thing. So don't give me this shit about, well, Democrats are this or Republicans are this. Both of them are the problem. Both of them are the problem. They're literally in a situation where they have a duopoly. You can't vote against the interests of this military state. Who are you going to vote for? Which person? Which party? So what, if I vote Democrat, is the Democrat going to behave like Obama and do the exact same thing if I vote Republican? Yes, they're going to behave like Trump and do the exact same thing. At which point do I get to put a vote for the process that says, yeah, I don't like this. I don't want this to keep going. And if all these Democrats are trying to co-opt these people back into the party, then you need to come up with some reason why those people should vote for you. Particularly some level of disparity between the policies of the previous administration, your previous administration, and this administration, because to be honest, these policies look pretty damn similar. They're just a matter of degrees. So yeah, this is, this is aggravating to me. They're murdering people. They're absolutely murdering people. And they're like, 
yeah, Trump's not a war criminal. Trump is a war criminal. He's literally a war criminal. He should be held up on charges in the same way that Obama and Bush should be held up on charges for the things they did in that office. This is absolutely gross. Totally gross. All right, guys.